Okay, it is time for something. Another episode of the Janky DS podcast coming at you number 68 this time. We, uh, well, we thank you for being, what? Being something. We thank you for being alive. Uh, and thanks for sticking it out on my little hiatus. We had a week off. As you're about to see, we were both, uh, Tom and I were both out of town, actually. And, you know, that's just what happens. Also, I'll go ahead and get this out of the way now, since uh, we tried to do our plugs again at the end of, like, all this recording and stuff, but my mic decided to cut out right at the end, and so we lost all that. So, if you haven't done so already, go to the corner, like, subscribe, Multimedia Media, you look at this playlist, that's the Jankity Ass Podcast, you will also get the Gutsy Ass Gamer, which currently is just a bunch of, uh, uh, bleh. It's just some Fallout 4 playthrough, which I will eventually pick up again here one of these days. That's, yeah, that's, that's one. It's, it's hard to get in and it's also hard to get out of that game. But uh, I'm currently working on uh, playing through Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I have about 13 episodes already in the bank. Almost. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to be starting releasing that on my on October 2nd, which is a Saturday, and also happens to be my birthday, so that's kind of like my own little birthday present to me. Uh, that series is going to be uh, on Saturdays, so there you go. And you also get Poncho's Paint Booth, which I have, uh, let's see, I have some new ones up recently. I'm still working through a bunch of commissions, and then I have some other models that I need to get through as well of my own. Uh, including because I'm finally getting back into uh, 40k tournaments and yeah I got some stuff I gotta paint up so there'll be more coming this week is probably not gonna be any well no I could probably squeeze something in but yeah so there's more coming and also multimedia media on Instagram Facebook TikTok which reminds me I gotta upload some more stuff today actually and dot com which you get links to, you know, everything. And then, of course, Tom, you can find over on our friends on the uh, TFG Radio podcast and also their new uh, Pod Save the Imperium podcast, which I I still have to check. I don't... Where's my phone? I still have to check if that is actually on iTunes. Where are we at? Pod save the Imperium. No results. Maybe as separate words. Come on. Well, oh, shit. Okay, so they, they don't actually have anything on iTunes yet, unfortunately, but they're working on it. Speaking of working on, uh, I got another beer that I'm going to be working on. Not 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 including the, uh, the one that I had for me and Tom recording. That was a good one. But this time, I've got the best made sour pickle beer. Made in Texas by Texans. Oh, yeah. Uh, 4.7%. And I am not sure how this is going to be, but let's see. Get my horn ready. Make sure my mic is still going. Without blasting this shit all over my keyboard. It's the last thing I want. And. Oh. That is quite sour 
Look at that. Nice. Golden lager. Kind of looks like pickle juice. It's extremely foamy. Shit. Oh, wow. That's bitter as a motherfucker. Okay, well. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but. Now, let's see. Martin House Brewing. Fort Worth. Oof, that has got a real nasty kick to it. Ugh. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna. Might not make it to the end of this one, but we'll see. Anyways. Oh, shit. I almost put this thing in sideways. Uh, anyways. For now, I'm going to take a cut. Oh, wait for the foam to die down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go take a break now. We'll get into me and Tom. And then I'll cut in again, and it'll be time for some more. So sit tight, relax, and enjoy the show. back another few episodes of the janky ass podcast we got some new material starting now now what is it that's the question do. yeah right no uh yeah i was out of town for last weekend so couldn't record then and tom you were doing whatever tom does yeah actually i was <laughs> also out of town this last week Actually, I, I got back in town yesterday. I was basically out the whole week. Ah. Well, I... Yeah, I, I, I came back on uh, Tuesday night. Which, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I... U U Ubers are getting kind of expensive <laughs> now. Because when I went there... When I, when I went to LA, I like... When I went to LAX, it was like 30 some bucks. Mm -hmm. And my trip back was 70. Oh, shit, seriously? That's, yeah. that's insane. And that, that was after like an hour of just, you know, refreshing, trying to get a better price. Which I'm pissed because there, there was one point where it was, it was all the way down to like 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, it's going down. I just have to wait a little bit more. And then, boom, it's like 90. Fuck, fuck that that is yeah. actually insane yeah so then I waited a bit more and eventually got to 70 I was like you know what fuck it just yeah. going home and of course the insane part is altogether it was still cheaper than just buying parking <laughs> for a week well dude down there if, if it's anything that I've learned from living in DC or LA it's anything is cheaper than parking buying a yacht i'm pretty sure is part cheaper than parking fairly in a very long well you still got to park the yacht yeah so you're <laughs> double fucked i mean the do docking fees aren't as bad as like commuter garages i'm i'm pretty sure i'm like i'm i'm, I'm actually pretty damn sure that's the case I don't think you'd ever find docking fees be more expensive than computer fees. Mm. I don't know. Maybe. It. I think it could probably also depend on the dock, right? Like if it's a really popular one, and it's like, well, yeah, maybe. Well, also, you know, supply and demand. Most that's people true, aren't true. demanding docking fees. <laughs> At least that's true as hell. I'm not. Yeah, no, neither am I. But uh. I was like, yeah, and of course there's there's still no good uh 
uh, which I'm call it no Subway, good Subway, or oh. yeah, that too. That's all of LAX. No good men. <laughs> By Flannery O'Connor. No, um, yeah, no, the uh, the 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 subway system. I mean, it's pretty okay. I mean, it's cheap-ish, but it doesn't really cover. The thing about it is, it doesn't really cover too too much, and. Yeah. One of the things about it also is that like it's designed to like oh you know you're saving you're saving on your fees to that you would have a parking or you're taking public transit or whatever but I feel like it only reaches areas where it's like I don't know like I'm getting I get more and more stories now where it's like people will take the metro link or Amtrak into Union Station and then metro from there so it's like at that point it's like oh well of course you're saving money and time there but also it's because you've you've choose to live so far away from downtown that you're spending that much time to just commute into work that way because it's cheaper to live wherever the hell it is you're living um now that said you know pandemic times have kind of changed things around but that was what that was what was like very much for me like you know before it all came crashing down well, I mean, I know that there used to be more lines back in the day, like in the 50s, 60s. There were? I want to say, that. oh, yeah, like you, you go downtown. Parts I mean, of I've, yeah. I, I've seen some, like I used to live in a building that used to be a metro station. I remember that. I li- it was actually a historical building because it used to be a metro station. And they called it Metro 417. That was the apartment I lived in. And like they had all of these like old school facades on the wall of like, you know, people taking the trains and stuff like that. A lot well, of you, apartment buildings, I think, downtown are converted metro stations. There are a number of them. That are factories. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, yeah, because there, there's a lot of places you go around. And you'll see they still have the uh, the tracks in the ground, but there's nothing. They're not connected to anything. Mm-hmm. So it's just because you get too many uh, too many fucking uh, conservatives or whatever. On city council saying, well, we don't want, you know, people coming here. It's like, oh, you mean the people who actually work here? All right. Yeah. Fucking morons. Thanks, bro. But I, I know they are planning to, they, they, they are, they are going to build a, a line coming down the 405. Mm-hmm. And that'll only be like another 10 years. Yeah. Or no. So from what I, but, from what I remember. I remember they had announced when I moved to DC, they had announced the silver line and it was like, like, Oh yeah, we're going to get started on it right around the time that I had started working. And then I'm like, yeah, we're going to get started on it real soon. And I was like, Oh cool. Cause I have a job that like, I can actually take that to. <laughs> By the time I left it, they had, like, they had just hit the shovel to the dirt. Like literally when I left, it was like, it had just started that week. And I was like, all right. And then at Tom's the same time, gone. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. And then like, a week or two after, the red line, which was one of the major lines in DC, completely shut down for months due to like basic massive infrastructure repairs where they were like, yeah, we got to spend a lot of time fixing this. Otherwise, people going to die. And I was like, oh, cool. Awesome. Fair so enough. Like, well, I dodged a bullet because I used to take that into the city all the time. Oh. So I would have just basically been effed, you know, had to drive her Uber, which at that point, Uber wasn't cheap either. Well, I fortunately don't really have much uh, uh, business downtown, so I don't really have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. And when I did, I mean, we had parking anyway, so it was fine. But, oh, speaking of business. Oh, yeah. Beer business. Uh, I got another one this time from our uh, boys at Adroit Theory. This is from their oh, uh, their nice. GI Joe series, Regime. The Regime. It is an yeah triple IPA. Ten percent. That'll do the trick. And I just noticed my video is still backwards. I wonder if I can. Remember the zoom does it weird where it shows you backwards, but then it corrects itself or is that not doing it this time? For you, but uh, I'm, re- I'm recording my screen. Hmm. 
So that doesn't really uh <laughs> that doesn't really pan out the way we think yeah. it would. Video settings. Where are you? Where are you? Um what is it? I don't I'm not drinking anything right now, but yesterday I had I a pretty pretty solid hazy IPA by Brewery X. It's called Disco Ooh. Ninja. Brewery X. I know, right? Um, I actually have been having more and more of their stuff. The first time I ever heard of them, it was because I, I got their hard seltzer called Zombie. Nice. It, it's a hard seltzer, and it's 10%. Oh, it's deli delicious. It's delightful. Um, but this time I saw it was a hazy IPA, and, I'm, you know, I couldn't have an IPA or two, and, like, you know, that's that's pretty much it. But these hazies that i've been finding i've been a big fan of because it's basically like an ipa that doesn't like slam in your face every single single time you take a drink that it's an ipa nice you know i've been a big fan of them recently well this one's pretty hazy too as oh, yeah. you can see oh definitely kind of reminds me it, it, it always it, it it looks like it should taste like butterscotch i know that's what I always gets me <laughs> Well, it's because, like, when we were kids, right, you'd see, like, those cartoons of people drinking beer, and it, like, the only frame of reference, like, well, adults love it. It's like adult candy. It's like adult liquid candy. Like, that's the only only re relative positioning you possibly had. Happens especially, to be true. Happens to be true. Um, well, especially, too, as kids, <clears throat> or at least as American kids, we don't really have any kind of bitter palate, like, at all. I don't think I don't even think most kids do. I think the, the bitter palate is a more refined like thing that you get when you're older, is my impression. Oh yeah, per, yeah, yeah. We definitely get too many sweets around here. But look at all of our cereal. <laughs> I did. Um, much more. I, I I did think it was interesting. I didn't realize that. Like, speaking of back in the day, mm -hmm. but like back 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 in the day day that back, back back in the day day yeah that alcohol wasn't really like that concentrated at all really what do you mean like was so, it that strong so so like you know how in like in ancient rome and greece or you know medieval times or vikings or whatever i was just like yeah everybody drank wine or mead or something like that like even the kids or whatever because well, obviously, the reason for that is because A, I guess, like, the fermentation process purified water, and mm -hmm. B, you just weren't, and there you went. No, uh, I'm, I'm still yeah. here. I just had to turn off the video for a sec. <laughs> and, um, oh, is that, like, a high school photo? <laughs> <laughs> or work? Oh, <laughs> Employee of the month? Oh, is that my LinkedIn photo? I guess. It's you in a suit, so. Yep, it's my LinkedIn photo. Probably super legit. If you want to hire Tom, Too call late. his mom. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> like, which one? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> There's like 10 of them. <laughs> oh, man. Or however many. But, um... Are you listening to this show and thinking, man, I'd like to start a podcast, but I don't even know where to start? Well, Buzzsprout has the answers for you. Buzzsprout is a podcast hosting service that provides a number of valuable resources to help you on your podcasting career path. For one, Buzzsprout offers indefinite hosting of all your episodes and allows you to host as much material as you want, depending on the type of subscription that you opt for. Buzzsprout also provides a means for getting your show hosted to every major podcasting platforms such as iTunes, Pandora, Spotify, you name it. In addition, Buzzsprout also provides various means to get your show monetized through various sponsorship and affiliate programs, links to other paid hosting platforms such as Patreon and YouTube, and your own personal newsroom to learn all the tips and tricks for optimizing your podcast 
for the greatest return on your investment. If you're hearing all this and you're still interested, you can go to my link below and receive an, and receive an Amazon gift card for starting a podcast hosting subscription that you'll receive on the second billing period of your podcast journey. Everyone has something to share, and there's no time left to present. Join Buzzsprout today. guys ready for a break let's get into some articles uh and as you saw whenever i opened up i did try try this uh sour pickle stuff but i i can't i i just can't it it, it is not my style it, it's like it's like a pickle but even more sour and bitter than a pickle and you're just drinking it so yeah no oh. And it, it, it's like a, it tastes like the burger pickles too. You know those kinds, like it's fermented in some other shit, aka alcohol in this case. But so yeah, I uh, I'm not recommending that one. I'm gonna push it to the side, and we'll just let it die. And in the meantime, I've only got a few art. I don't have as many as I normally do. I only pulled four for you guys this time. So let's see what we got. Mostly movie stuff. First up, Ryan Reynolds reportedly wants in on Thor, Love and Thunder reshoots. I did not realize that. So I, I, I did see this article and obviously, well, obviously, of course he does. They, he, he is trying to get uh, Deadpool worked into Marvel or the regular MCU. Instead of just being part of Sony. Yeah. Of course, I'm yawning again, even though it's, it's fucking five in the afternoon, 530. Uh, what I did not know, however, is that this was uh, they're doing reshoots for the movie. I'm not sure why, but it'd be fun if he was in there. It'd probably only be for like a like a quick cameo type thing, but who knows? And we actually do talk a bit, talk a bit more about this uh later me and Tom do Tom and I I should say so I'll go ahead and move on huh if my fucking body will allow it Two. James Gunn's The Suicide Squad proves DC needs to trust its directors now this is something that I've uh ranted on about especially since uh uh what was it I can't remember anything today the re no the yeah the the uh the snyder cut of justice league came out as there's just been like you know more and more stories about how dc basically just undercut themselves really at every turn that they possibly could and they were basically more focused on money than they were a good movie which ultimately leads to less money so and I guess it seems like they just didn't didn't interfere with James Gunn. They just let him do whatever he wanted to do, and it was a great movie. So hopefully that's a uh, a continuing trend. Oh fuck! <sighs> whatever. Next up, it's a little bit old. Video of Taliban fighters in bumper cars with guns presents surreal image of Afghanistan conflict. So we didn't actually touch on this, but since the last time we recorded, the uh, uh, well, Trump's actually Trump's peace deal with the Taliban finally took effect. 
only accept this under the Biden administration. So, of course, everybody blames him for not reversing it or whatever. I don't know. But, so yeah, the U.S. basically pulled uh, most of the military out of Afghanistan. And th that was at the time of this article. So, I think this was like a day after that happened, which you can see is like the, the 17th of August. But... Yeah, since then it's also come to the attention that they've that the the US basically just left like a ton of shit behind. Like, you know, tanks and helicopters and all that stuff, which of course the Taliban has now. And they were able to do so because of the road work that we uh built in Afghanistan. So now they have working roads for the next what, twenty or thirty years? Or at least at least the one big one. <sighs> Boy, big, it's, it's been just a, uh, a clusterfuck all around. And speaking of... Uh, this last one is a continuation of a previous article that I showed you guys. It's hyenas hoard human and animal bones over a span of 7,000 years. Which, this was the, uh, the hyena cave that I'd mentioned before in Saudi Arabia. You kind of see there's a nice uh, red dot. That's where it is. In the middle of nowhere. And that is basically thousands of years of humans and animals that are in there. That's that's a that's a lot. Especially when you think about that. Uh, well, let's see. The Julian calendar is only 2,000 years old. And that's the... Uh, that, that That's the... Uh, Whatchamacallit, the, the one that starts with what's allegedly the birth of Jesus, aka the the zero. Which is uh yeah, so so the positive years are Anno or A D or Anno Domini. I don't know exactly which what that means, and then everything before that is before Christ. So that's two that would be the year zero for us, which is two thousand years ago. And then by contrast, the uh the Hebrew calendar is actually 5,000 years old. Because that starts with uh, some other things. I don't know exactly what. And then I think... I'm not entirely sure, but I think the uh, the Egyptian calendar might be about the same age. But the point being is that this cave, there are bones dated in this cave to be older than even... You know those religions. I mean, and, and we, when you think about it, like we we barely have any idea, or well, we do have an idea, but we we don't really know a lot about what happened even two thousand years ago, let alone uh, seven thousand. So it, it it's a long time. It's a long time to be collecting bones, but it's a bit of a shorter time that I have with you this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna dump this shit out. I'm not drinking this anymore. I mean, look, look, look at this. It's literally just pickle juice and... Ugh. I can't do it. And if I can't do it, then you guys definitely can't do it. But what you can do is stay there and keep listening, keep watching. And yeah, you get some more plugs at the end and more fun stuff, more stuff to come. So stay out. I've heard that too actually yeah. like, and it wasn't it, like the strongest really that you would ever get would be like wine that's like generally speaking the strongest it would ever get but everything else was just kind of like um you know it was just kind of on the weaker side of things yeah i think it was like two or three percent mm -hmm. maybe at the most 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, like for example, I know that um, one of the things the Egyptians used to give their slaves was um, was they basically Egyptians had a form wine. Of beer. Yeah. Well, they or had beer. Form, yeah. Yeah, it was a form of beer. And <clears throat> but it was like a protein beer, so like it would kind of give them a little bit of a buzz, and it would also be like so it would be kind of packed with a bunch of nutrients, and they'd just be like, "All right, drink up, sons, and then go back to work." <laughs> So when they'd finally catch a gator and then just squeak, ring it out, yeah. some shit. Protein. Yeah, basically. It's a milkshake. Mm-hmm. But no, now we're now we're a few cool future Homo sapiens. I wouldn't I know, need right? to do that. <laughs> now it's soylent green. Well, actual water, water. Oh well, that too. <laughs> But that's another thing too. Is I think part of the reason why you wouldn't get drinks as concentrated is because, in a lot of ways, people drank these to get a form of water that was purified. Yeah. So they, they needed to drink water. They didn't always need to get drunk. That's why, like, you saved like the good stuff for when it was party time. Mm. And since you were always mixing it with a, uh, like berries or honey or whatever the fuck else you were fermenting with. Mm-hmm. You weren't using as much water per, or you could spread it out. Yeah. At least. So I guess like this much water could be like a gallon of beer or something like that. Yeah. Maybe probably. I, I don't know the numbers. Yeah. I don't know numbers. And they didn't really have numbers because they were all ancient savages and shit. Who cares? <laughs> I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> ignore that comment very heavily. Well, you're not related to any of them. No, so it's, it's, no, it's more, it's more like a la- It's more like, bro, like if <laughs> if the ancients were good at anything, it was freaking math. Like that was it. Well, some of them. I'm gonna drop this book on you. It's called the Euclid's Geometry. Ancient Greece, maybe you've heard of it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. No, well, the, the rest of them, well, they couldn't figure out basic equations like how many times can we fuck up before our civilization implodes. <laughs> That's what that's worth. That, that's how philosophy got started. <laughs> We're still not there. No, we we don't know. Uh, fuck. I was just gonna say something, but I forgot. Uh, I guess in your guys' case, it would be like potato vodka or whatever. Maybe, <laughs> I guess that's more Russian, isn't it? Or well, maybe not. Uh. It- Potato vodka is is probably more Russian, I would think. But vodka is like one of those crazy things where you can you can make it from just pretty much anything. Like if you can ferment it, it's it's probably vodka. <laughs> you can make you can make it in prison. Yeah, so, exactly. Yes. Pretty much. Nothing like a little bit of toilet bowl stew. <laughs> <laughs>